Welcome back to Android Authority's Q&A. My name is Jace, and today we cover everything from flexible displays to the best mid-range phones to even settling some controversy that I stirred up last week. Here it comes. Question number one came from Conan. Conan said, will the Samsung Galaxy S5 be released with the flexible OLED display? Well, no. There's no credible rumor out there right now that the Samsung Galaxy S5 will come out with a flexible display of any sort, but Samsung has demonstrated that they do have that technology with the Galaxy Round, which does have a flexible display. Now, some might say that there's real no practical use for it the way it stands right now, but it is just a prototype. Samsung has demonstrated that they do have that technology. Hopefully, they'll be employing it in the new phone sooner rather than later. But what has been officially announced is the LG G Flex, which indeed does have a flexible display. Now the Flex will come with a 6-inch 720 video display, that great Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and a 13 megapixel camera, and I know you're going to love this, the 3500 milliamp battery. Now I know what some of you might be thinking, you're thinking, Jace! This is all just kind of gimmicky and fluff until we use this OLED flexible displays for the really sexy stuff like improving wearable devices. I mean, who needs just a slightly flexible phone? Yes, there may be some truth to that, unless you put stock into the crazy bold claim that LG made that their new OLED screens will heal themselves after being scratched. So, yeah, you could scratch it with a coin or a key or something, and a few minutes later, the screen heals itself. I see some great opportunities there to inflict some justice on a particular wife who may have dropped and broken multiple, multiple devices of mine. <laughs> yeah, but that wouldn't be true justice, would it? You don't think I'll do it right now from here, five feet up? <laughs> I can't look. Jace, where's my tablet? <laughs> The second question comes from Francisco. Francisco said, I'm a teenager and a huge tech fan. Since I can't afford the best smartphone on the market, what mid-range device would you recommend? I'm going to assume here, Francisco, that by mid-range, you mean anything under $350 off contract. Now, the Nexus 5 is really the premium phone right now at that mid-range price and is really the best bang for your buck. Now, for the rest of the world who can't get their hands on a Nexus 5 right now, we recommend the Sony Xperia L. It can be found for around $250 US. Question number three comes from Peter. Peter said, I'm thinking of buying the Samsung Galaxy S4. I'm wondering what are the common problems with the phone? Well, Peter, some people are complain about the plastic-like, less quality feel of a premium priced phone. Number two, although the phone is generally very quick with its tasks, it is very slow to upload its gallery. The problem is compounded with the micro SD card and the more stuff on the card, the more the phone has to parse. And number three, when it comes to the air view and air gestures and smart scroll, a number of people have complained that although they're very cool in their own way, they are flawed and overly complex and really marring the overall simplicity of Android. Question number four comes from Adam. Adam said, I have a question about how best to charge the battery on my phone. For example, if it's at 70%, should I just charge it to 100% before I go to work? Is it bad to charge my phone repeatedly? Normally I would only charge at night when I sleep. I'm just curious on how best I should charge it. Thanks for your time and your help. Great question, Adam, and I learned a lot about this here too. It turns out that we should avoid fully charging or fully discharging our phone. Avoid letting your phone's battery run all the way down. Unlike nickel-based batteries, lithium-based batteries are designed to be charged early and often, and letting them get too low can damage the battery if it's done repeatedly. With lithium-based batteries, doing shallower, frequent charging prolongs the battery life. This is according to independent tests done by Gizmodo and by BatteryUniversity.com. So guys, last week most people seemed to love the first Q&A, but some people thought I was just blatantly, you know, incompetent and didn't know what I was talking about and giving out bad information. So if and when that happens again, please kindly share it in the comments, but as adults, give me some backup verifiable info where I can, you know, uh, you know, back up your claim and, and, and if I stand corrected to correct myself and then share it in the next Q&A the next week. I'm more than happy to do that. So, uh, there were some other questions about leaving XDA and is XDA and, and Android Authority merged and why are all the XDA hosts leaving? Well, they're, they're not. It's just for me, uh, XDA decided that they could no longer continue their weekend shows on Saturday and Sunday. 
Um, so, you know, I had to move on and uh, Andrew Authority uh, was, was there for me and I'm happy to be back in the saddle creating shows for you all. So I'm also trying to make a balance between the easy beginner questions and the more hardcore questions. So please keep the hardcore questions coming. I like it. How do I fix my cracked screen? A lot of love and forgiveness. Uh.